Happy Halloween. This is Threatwire. On October 24th, an email was delivered to the Greater Linux kernel community from a long-term contributor, Surge7. This email contained a goodbye message. He had been removed from the maintainers of Linux, but he wasn't the only one. Multiple maintainers had been removed. For those unfamiliar with the official Linux kernel maintenance process, there is a file in the kernel that contains a list of all the official driver and subsystem maintainers. This file list is used by developers to know where to send patches and code for certain files, directories, and parts of the Linux kernel. It is not a credit list. There exists a separate credit file for those who have contributed to the Linux kernel. The removal of these maintainers was, quote, quietly merged into the Linux core with patch Linux 6.12-RC4. All of the maintainers removed were affiliated with Russia in some way. The patch to the maintainers list was noted to occur due to various compliance requirements. According to those removed, there was originally no clarity around these compliance requirements, what they were, and why they were happening. A legacy kernel developer eventually responded to the mailing list, adding clarity to the removal. Please accept all of our apologies for the way this was handled. A summary of the legal advice the kernel is operating under is, if your company is on the U.S. OFAC SDN lists, subject to an OFAC sanctions program, or owned slash controlled by a company on the list, our ability to collaborate with you will be subject to restrictions, and you cannot be in the maintainer's file. According to this legacy developer, appeals can be made if provided proper documentation. For Safe AI, they've opened a new bug bounty program with the potential to pay out up to $1 million. The program is to test their new private cloud compute known as PCC, which is Apple's attempt to create private AI processing. PCC was originally introduced to the public in June 2024 and was originally created to make sure that any PII and user data sent to the service is not accessible to anyone but the user. This is including Apple. In the launch announcement, Apple explains one of their design principles for creating private cloud compute. Security researchers need to be able to verify with a high degree of confidence that our privacy and security guarantees for private cloud compute match our public promises. This past week, Apple followed through on this principle with the introduction of this new bug bounty program and the new tools they introduced with it. Their PCC virtual research environments are now public access. This research environment comes along with open sourcing of code for four different services used by PCC created by Apple, now available on GitHub. The actual bug bounty announced has a wide range of payouts, with the lowest being accidental or unexpected data disclosure due to a deployment or configuration issue, paying out a maximum of $50,000. The largest is arbitrary code execution with arbitrary entitlements, paying out a maximum of $1 million. While this service has been under scrutiny of private research groups for months now, as well as Apple's own internal security research teams, the opportunity here is new, and so you should get on it early. We finally have a new CVE of the week, CVE 2024-4757, known as 40Jump. 40Jump affects the Fortinet 40 manager, how many times can I say 40 in a quick succession, and has been in circulation since June of 2024. The zero day was confirmed by Mandian as being used in the wild by threat actors and has affected over 50 servers. In the exploration and research stage of the CVE, they found no signs of malicious payloads or device tampering. There were only four files slash directories created that were out of the ordinary. These files contain information about the servers affected. They also discovered outbound traffic to certain IP addresses. Data was exfiltrated from the affected devices. However, Mandiant and Fortinet have not found any signs that the data has been released by the attackers or that the threat actors' infiltrations were used to affect other devices. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of October 28th, 2024. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much for checking that out. By the way, my new vlog is available on my YouTube channel. It's a day in the life of creating ThreatWire as well as doing a little Q&A. 
I'm coming up on my one year since I became host of Threatwire. So hackers, I'm curious, what should we do to celebrate? Maybe a live stream? What do you think? What should we do on that live stream? Let me know in the comments. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Ally on everything, including Minecraft. And as always, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.